Not all models of the Toyota brand in our country were destined to become cult and, moreover, mass, but none of them should be deleted from the list of possible purchases within the segment of interest. It is in this vein that the Toyota Venza should be considered, which some owners call the best family car, while others hate it for its size, dynamics, and, and a lot more for that. At one time, journalists argued for a long time what class to attribute the new Toyota model to, presented at NAIAS 2008 in Detroit. In the USA, it was presented as a crossover SUV, and in our country, after the start of official sales, it was called an SUV at all. In fact, the car with the factory code AV10, named Venza, was a fairly typical off-road station wagon, built on the basis of the Camry 1540. To be absolutely precise, the Toyota K platform united the novelty with the Camry, but it received a new and original body. Two engines could stand under the hood, an inline 41 ARFE with a volume of 2.7 liters and a power of 185 horsepower, and V-shaped 62 GRFE, 3.5 liters, 272 horsepower. Eisen 6-speed gearboxes worked with them, with a V6 U660E, with a four-cylinder engine adapted for lower torque U760E, according to Eisen classification TM60LS. Both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive versions were launched into the series with automatic connection of the rear axle using a viscous coupling. The car received the only, and rather rich, equipment, which could be supplemented by several option packages. In general, Venza was initially focused exclusively on the North American market, and the main task was to create a family car with a spacious interior, a large trunk, a smooth ride, and a large number of comfort options familiar to Americans. The company expected to reach a sales level of 100,000 units in the U.S. and Canadian markets, which, however, was never reached, a maximum of 54,389 vehicles in 2012. Perhaps the fact that Americans are accustomed to the fact that a car of this size should have seven seats had an effect. In the same 2012, the car underwent a slight restyling, which consisted in changing the design of the front end and the appearance of standard LE, XLE, and limited trim levels, but to the expected increase in sales it didn't lead. The company felt that the start of exports to the old world could save the situation. Soon the car began to be sold in China, and on June 15, 2013, its official sales began in Russia. The model was accepted quite favorably, despite the rather high price, from 1,570,000 rubles for a front-wheel drive version to 1,776,000 rubles for an all-wheel drive car in the top configuration, especially since by that time a certain number of Venzas imported by gray dealers were already running on the roads of the country. Nevertheless, due to the high price, imports from American auctions continued even after the start of official sales. Judge for yourself, a top-end car could be purchased there, spending about 650,000 rubles for the purchase itself, about 100,000 for delivery and 400,000 rubles for customs clearance. And with all this, about 10,000 Toyota Venzas were officially sold in the Russian Federation in two years. However, since sales of the model in the USA continued to decline, in 2015 it was decided to stop its production for the American market, and in January 2016 the Toyota Representative Office, optimizing its line during the crisis, stopped sales of Venza in our country. Export of the model from the USA to China continued until 2017. All this did not prevent the model from maintaining sufficient popularity and high liquidity in the secondary market primarily because of the reputation of the brand. To date, an American model year 2009 can be purchased for 900 to 950,000 rubles, 2011 about 1,400,000, and for cars purchased in showrooms 2013 to 2014 with a clean history and a service book, they ask from 1,200,000 to 1,600,000 rubles, depending on the mileage, version, and configuration. The reviews of the owners on the internet, as a rule, sound quite positive, but there is still no absolute perfection in the world, so they still have certain complaints. So let's see what the former and current owners of Venza like, and what annoys them. Hate number 5, Dimensions, Visibility, Turning Radius. 
Venza is a predominantly urban car, but it is designed for American urban planning standards. So it is during operation in the city that Russian owners face a number of inconveniences. Firstly, this is a big car, 8 mm longer, 80 wider and 130 mm higher than the single platform Toyota Camry, and it can be difficult to maneuver in an urban crowd. This problem is especially worrisome for the weaker sex. My wife did not like the car in terms of control and dimensions. We live in the center of St. The wife never got behind the wheel. Quite a few reviews complain about a large turning radius, they say. It cannot be compared with RAV4 or Forester. A lot of complaints about a bad review back. Firstly, the Venza's side mirrors are nice, designer, but the size is more consistent with some compact passenger car. The main disadvantage is that there are dead zones in the rearview mirrors. You have to get used to and constantly control this moment, the author of one of the reviews complains. The driver's mirror is American. The gazelle is easily placed in the dead zone. Another echoes him. In a number of configurations, the mirrors were equipped with regular aspherical inserts, but they do not radically change the situation. The image in them is small, it is difficult to perceive, while the already small main mirrors become dangerously narrow. There are different ways to deal with this problem. Someone advises installing a mirror from Toyota Avensis, someone simply recommends abandoning the habit of adjusting the mirror so that the side of your own car is visible in it, and installing it along the very edge of the body. Venza is also dirty, and the rear wiper does not always do its job well, you can only see anything through the rear window for the first two or three days after washing. The rear wiper copes badly with sticky snow porridge. The rear view camera in such weather is also not very effective. Love number five, appearance. Perhaps the Toyota Venza does not deserve a place in the Museum of Modern Art as an example of automotive design. Nevertheless, in many reviews, the owners admit that the purchase of this model was quite spontaneous. They saw it, fell in love, and bought it. We walked around the car market, saw it, liked it. I saw it in America in 2010 and fell in love at first sight. We didn't plan to buy Venza, but we saw it, liked it, bought it. In any case, the owners evaluate the appearance of the car purely positively. Personally, Venza reminds me of some kind big good whale or sperm whale. The muzzle deserves special mention, a solid, noble one, with a massive grille and frowning running lights diodes. Personally, I consider the Venza one of the most beautiful Toyotas that were officially sold in Russia. Dignity, of course, is subjective, but even now, a black or dark gray Venza makes me turn around. Among the details leading to such an effect, they also mention regular wheels on 19 discs and small minivan windows on the sides of the front panel that cause tenderness useless, but cool. Many reviews also mention a certain exclusivity that causes increased attention on the road, and this always warms the soul of the owner when I took it. There were only five to seven such cars in St. Petersburg. They did an inspection at the service station, so all the staff gathered. A Lexus RX 300 was serviced nearby. The owner came up with a driver, asked permission to look and sit. He went out, cursed, said, why do I need these show-offs? Well, he told the driver to put the Lexus up for sale and start looking for a similar one inch. They still turn around in the city. In general, it's a bright car. Girly pedestrians shoot with their eyes. People pay attention on the road. So the assessment perhaps this is the most beautiful Toyota may be subjective, but not without reason. Hate number four, modest dynamics. In principle, Venza owners do not actively express indignation at the dynamic capabilities of their car. Rather, they express some disappointment. They say that the dynamics are not bad, but not at all what they expected. Indeed, 2.7 liters and 185 horses move 2 tons rather sluggishly. Acceleration is quite tight and even, but 185 horsepower frankly not enough for such a carcass. Some kind of thoughtful kick down. I drive along the highway at 80 kilometers slash H. I stomp on the pedal while overtaking. The engine roars like a wounded hippopotamus. The arrow flies up to the red zone and nothing else happens. After unbearably long seconds, the car starts to accelerate. 
the collective mind came to the conclusion that the front-wheel drive versions of the Dynamics are somewhat better. On the front-wheel drive, the Dynamics, according to reviews, are enough for everyone, including me. Again, it is important to compare with what? According to the owners, and they most often compare with their previous cars, Venza, compared to the RAV4 or Pajero Sport, runs very briskly. In any case, the car, with its weight, dimensions, and dynamic capabilities, actively resists the chest style of rebuilding and has a measured, solid driving style. You seem to be in no hurry, but you still go fast enough. In a word, this car is absolutely not suitable for street racing. Love number four, reliability and cost of ownership. Toyota in Russia is not just a brand. It's already a symbol. We say Toyota, we mean reliability. We say reliability, we mean Toyota. Duh. So there is nothing surprising in the fact that for many, the reliability factor, and hence the relatively low cost of ownership, has become decisive when choosing a car. After owning the Freelander, Range Rover, and Touareg, I wanted to take a simple anti-crisis Japanese car with a low cost of ownership, one of the owners directly writes in his review. Venza, in fact, has two classmates, the Mercedes R-Class and the Volvo XC70. But their cost of ownership is different, another echoes him. Venza, in the vast majority of cases, justifies the hopes placed on it. The entire mechanical part is unified with the Lexus RX and Toyota Highlander. The engine and gearbox are the very embodiment of reliability in the modern automotive world. Everything is solid and reliable. Indeed, an anti-crisis option, with the exception of the initial price. In almost every review you can find a mention of problem-free years and kilometers of operation. Nothing broke for 48,000 kilometers for six years with careful driving only replacement of racks and consumables during the time of owning a car, and at seven years old, I only changed oils, filters, fluids, pads and once racks in a circle. To date, the mileage is already 84,000 miles. The fifth year of ownership of the Swallow is underway. Works in normal mode. Of the unscheduled replacements only the stabilizer struts, not so long ago, they saw a Venza at the car wash with a mileage of 500,000 plus, they probably live in it. No, of course, when buying a car on the secondary market, it is quite possible to run into unexpected problems, but they will most likely be connected with the nature of the previous operation, the repair was done once, the drives came up and the car in. The previous owner was tearing up apparently she thought that she was driving a ferrari the car does not have many congenital diseases in the reviews the authors mention weak rear shock absorbers steering rack and front stabilizer struts it happens that there is a knock in the steering and it's not always easy to understand what is tapping the already mentioned stabilizer struts tie rods or tips it often turns out that the ring insert in the electric amplifier is to blame you don't even need to change it, just straighten it out, although in the official service they can also be sentenced to replace the euro. In any case, Venza belongs to the category of cars that do not break down, which, together with a completely sane tax, only 9,250 rubles, and low theft, makes the life of the owner of this car quite trouble-free. Will not become a problem and its subsequent implementation. The only thing worth considering is that the American ones are cheaper, and it's a little more difficult to sell them. They, as a rule, have poorer configurations, and there are a number of specific features. For example, the radio does not receive some Russian FM stations, and buyers today prefer to look for a car, about which you can say dealership, with a transparent history and marks in the service book, unbeaten and unpainted, from one owner. Hate number three, lack of usual options, paintwork. The Toyota Venza is a very well-equipped car, but the fact that the model was originally aimed at the American market still shows. In the US and Europe, there are quite different ideas about which comfort options should be present and which ones you can do without. For example, many Venzas imported from the US do not have heated seats. Apparently, there is no winter in America. The owners of such cars sadly fixed the problem. Another example of savings from the same opera, there is no glass heating and even a wiper zone. After the Europeans it looks wild. 
someone is surprised by the absence of a headlight corrector, someone is amazed by the lack of heated mirrors, someone is indignant at the fact that in a car that cost more than 1.7 million rubles new, there is no electric folding mirrors, and this despite the fact that Toyota Aorus for 850,000 it was provided, in the complete set, as in the previous basic one, the mirrors fold mechanically. I can't understand and forgive this joke. Another example of saving on matches, the hatch opens with one click, and to close it, you need to keep the button pressed. There are quite strange ergonomic solutions. For example, the lighting of the cup holders next to the armrest is only visible to the driver. But why should he look there? In a number of reviews, I met complaints that there is no trunk release button on the fifth door, that is, you can open the door and turn on the servo only from the key fob or by pressing the button under the steering wheel. By the way, for some reason, this door causes the most complaints about the weakness of the paintwork, the appearance of chips first, and then saffron mushrooms. Love number three, cabin and trunk volume. The majority of Venza owners to the question why, in fact, did they choose this particular model? They answer something like this, I'm supposedly a family man, and the presence of two small boys dictates its own conditions, so the place for them in the back should be spacious, and the trunk should be voluminous. Actually, it is the internal volumes that the authors of the reviews primarily admire. The salon is gigantic, larger than in the Prado or Tuareg. For passengers in the rear, there is even more space than in the Range Rover, only with the Mercedes S-Class can be compared, and this is not a joke. Behind, behind the front passenger, you can sit cross-legged. In the trunk, I carried a bed about 190 centimeters long. There is a 14-liter box under the armrest. I consider the most outstanding quality of Venza to be its internal volume. There is much more space in the cabin than in the Highlander or Cruzac, a giant trunk, 975 liters, although you can't tell by sight, in the back row, children can simply walk between the seats, three full-fledged child seats fit easily. So, when traveling to the Crimea from St. Petersburg with three children, everything got into the trunk, including a rather big stroller and a scooter. At the same time, outwardly Venza does not seem like a monstrous SUV, and behind the wheel you feel quite like in a sedan, the rear sofa is a separate story. Saying comfortable is an understatement. I was sitting behind a guy about 90 meters, enjoying life, comparing landing with an aircraft business class. The doorways at the back are also well thought out, you get out like a minibus, freely, without bending down, without clinging to anything, there are a lot of places, especially in the back. I love to go there when my wife or children take me. The car looks low, but inside it is far from the ceiling. I am very large in the shoulders, but people like me will calmly sit down on a long journey three of us. Advanced users note that there are at least two places in the cabin where you can attach a smartphone, connect charging to it from the box, while the wires will not be confused throughout the cabin. Those who like to freshen up on the way like that in the box you can cool drinks with a capacity of up to 1 liter, fans of long distance travel, that in the cabin you get a full-fledged sleeping place for people 185 centimeters tall and above, and, having settled down for the night, you can admire the starry sky through the transparent panoramic roof. Parents of small children like the fact that a child, seated in a child seat installed on the rear sofa, does not reach the back of the front seat with their feet and does not stain it, and fishing enthusiasts are delighted that a two-seater collapsible boat is placed in the trunk, a five-horsepower outboard motor, three life jackets, a 10-liter cauldron, a 30-liter canister, four sleeping bags, and four backpacks of 70 liters each. In a word, according to one of the authors, after Venza, all salons seem scanty and cramped. Hate number two, consumption and noise isolation. The attitude of Venza owners to the appetite of their car can hardly be called hatred, but there is no unanimity in assessing the economy either. The average consumption, judging by the reviews, is usually about 11 to 11.5 L slash 100 kilometers. In the city, with our usual driving style, it, as a rule, is about 14 L slash 100 kilometers, with correct and gentle about 12, and if you press the gas pedal from the heart, you can get 16 to 18. Naturally, in winter, consumption increases to 13 to 14 liters per hundred, even with careful and measured driving. 
Someone regards such an expense as quite acceptable or even considers the car to be very economical, especially if before that he had driven large SUVs with multi-liter engines. Those who used to drive small cars that do not drink gasoline but sniff it are somewhat upset because in their view such an expense does not fit into the concept of economical. Approximately the same story happens with the assessment of sound insulation. Having left the city, I realized that I was on soundproofing, it simply does not exist, and not even in comparison with the Lexus, but with the Camry or the official Jetta. And this at a cost of 1.7 million. The author of one of the reviews is outraged. Great soundproofing. You can't hear the engine at all during a quiet movement, noise isolation is just super, others contradict him. Indeed, some owners place sound insulation among almost the main advantages of the model, the other part among the most important disadvantages. In fact, as always, the truth is somewhere nearby, noise isolation is SOSO, like all Japanese. Added Shumkov in the doors and arches, it got better. But I compared it with an inexpensive Korean, it turned out that I scolded in vain, everything is much worse there. Indeed, on specialized forums, discussions about where, how, and how much additional sound insulation can be glued are quite common. The owners agree that the wheel arches are the main source of noise, but the front double windows perfectly isolate the cabin from external sources and aerodynamic noise. Someone generally declares that, if he knew about the need to invest in a good Shumkov, and this is not a cheap pleasure at all, the choice could fall on another car. Love number two, thresholds and doors. In almost every review of the Toyota Venza, you can find a mention of very conveniently designed doorways that allow you to take a seat in the cabin and leave it calmly and with dignity, without any acrobatic exercises, the clearance is very decent, but at the same time, landing is easier and more comfortable than in the XC90 and RX, which is quite surprising, since in the case of the RX the cars are similar in terms of clearance. And as a very positive design feature, the owners note the fact that the doors close the thresholds. The fact that the thresholds are closed by doors is very good. You can't get into a neighbor's car on a duster, you'll definitely get out, and then even an elderly mother sat down and didn't get dirty on the threshold. Yes, on the one hand, it is very convenient to know that if you touch the threshold with trousers, they will remain clean. But there is a downside. Try to open the door near the high bump or curb. You will immediately discover that this is an ambush, the edge is too low. Many people mention this feature of Venza, doors often do not allow parking tightly to high curbs, it is inconvenient to get out of the car where there is a high curb, the doors are designed in such a way that they close the threshold so that when you open it, it is easy to hurt border. In fact, it's nothing to worry about, but you need to remember this. Hate number one traction overhangs no towing eyes crossovers by definition are versatile vehicles that provide the comfort of a sedan or hatchback on paved roads while at the same time making it possible to move onto the ground without much fear so many of the venza buyers had certain hopes for the model well the ground clearance is 205 millimeters there is also an all-wheel drive and in the end, they are disappointed, forcing them to write insulting words in the reviews. Of course, it doesn't have any cross-country ability, and this is obvious, you won't go to the forest, it's not suitable for fishing or hunting. Several factors affect this, and above all, the huge front overhang. The approach angle of the Toyota Venza is only 17 degrees, while the similarly sized Highlander has 29 degrees. The ESP system does not cope very well with diagonal hanging, and the McPherson struts, installed not only in front but also in the rear, do not like fast driving over bumps. So the words of one of the owners seem to be quite reasonable. For three winters, I never got stuck anywhere and never regretted that I took the front wheel drive. The ground clearance of 20 plus cm allows you to drive safely and not dig in the snow almost everywhere. Well, yes, on a steep sandy, gravel, or icy slope, a front-wheel drive car naturally fails due to the unloading of the drive wheels, but the all-wheel drive Venza is quite on the shoulder. In winter, I tried to skid on an icy hill. He stopped in the ascent, and from the place he pressed the gas to the floor, he stalled, but left. The second time I tried, but smoothly. 
I started off without polishing, that is, all drive systems and anti-skid are working. I tried to plant the car in loose, barefoot you fall down to your ankles, sand uphill, it didn't work out even with the anti-skid system turned off. In general, decent ground clearance and four-wheel drive really allow you to get to the cottage after a snowfall, get through a bad mountain road, or slip through some kind of sudden mud ambush. But the car is absolutely not designed for serious off-road adventures, since, in principle, it does not have towing eyes. The instructions say so, to tow the car, place it on a tow truck. Now imagine the consequences of being stuck in the mud a couple of hundred meters from the target. In some other case, yes, think about it, a neighbor drove up on the cruiser, pulled, and that's it. And then what to do? Actually, the same problem can rise to its full height in the event of a sudden breakdown. Here is a story of one of the owners. The alternator belt broke, fell under the crankshaft pulley, and smoked. Stopped at the crossroads, smoke from under the hood. You cannot move on. Opened the hood, looked, did not find anything burning. Called a friend. A friend arrived and escaped five minutes later. I took out the rope, but there is nothing to cling to either the back or the front. In general, the two of them pushed the car from the intersection, bought a belt for 370 rubles, and they replaced it in 30 minutes. But it was clearly in the city, since we are talking about a crossroads. And what happened that far from civilization? After all, according to Chisholm's third law, everything that cannot break, breaks anyway. Love number one, comfort and optional richness. But in assessing the comfort that Venza provides, the authors of the reviews are extremely unanimous. Firstly, the owners really like the seats, with many adjustments, including lumbar support, in which a person of any height can easily get settled. You sit in the cabin that the feeling that you are in a Lexus RX does not leave. I set up the seat for myself, 171 centimeters in me, I sit and relax, the impression is that I fell apart on my favorite sofa in front of the telly, I apologize in advance for such lyrical digressions. A chic comfortable chair, Forek is resting, but RAV4 had better lateral support, light high quality leather with even stitching, dark wood inserts, chrome elements, a panoramic roof, an awesomely comfortable rear sofa, a giant interior, in short, full of luxury. The automatic transmission lever is an elegant nickel-plated pin topped with a wooden leather knob. I want to constantly touch and stroke, old Freud rolls over. I like the general style and atmosphere of the salon, I also like everything in the interior. Laconic, restrained, and high quality. I can't fault anything here. Everything is well thought out. There are not thousands of stupid buttons that can take out the brain, like on competitors. At the same time, the options are the same, and it is more convenient to manage them. I especially like the control from the steering wheel, you can turn on almost any function of the car. And there are a lot of these functions, navigation, Bluetooth, hands-free, cruise control, rear view camera, power tailgate, sunroof, adaptive interior mirror, tire pressure sensors. Long list. And all this affects the choice. When I saw the car in the ad, I thought it was the maximum configuration, since it had double glazing, sunroofs, memory for the driver's seat, a trunk closer, and a driver's seat that slides out when you exit. Against the backdrop of scanty configurations of the Prado, it looked much more interesting. Many reviews specifically mention the panoramic roof. The panoramic roof is an ideal feature if you are traveling with children on a long journey, and, in principle, a cool thing if you simply want daylight in the cabin. There is also a hatch, but we personally used it at most twice, so we don't see much point in it. The owners and the standard audio system also praise, JBL Music is just a song for this segment. 13 speakers, very balanced, much better than the JBL Camry. Everyone who could appreciate was delighted, among them were those who have Harman Kardon in BMW and Burmester in E400 W213. The stock 12-speaker Pioneer in a Lexus plays just ugly, even if you tune it hard. However, the owners wrote no less than any good words about driving comfort. After the Outback, I drove a 3.5-liter Nissan Tina for a year. In a straight line, the car drove perfectly, but on the road to Finland through Imatra, along a winding highway, 
it was uncomfortable to drive, and this was with a clearance of 135 millimeters, expected similar and from Venza. Surprisingly, handling is comparable to the Touareg. You drive calmly and relaxed. Unlike Subaru, the car does not provoke aggressive driving. Yes, the Venza's suspension is balanced, providing a smooth ride without the rider feeling bouncy or slack. The car perfectly keeps the trajectory. On a wet track, it enters into turns of 120 to 130 degrees at 100 kilometers slash h, as if on rails, not the slightest hint of demolition. At the same time, according to the owners, the suspension regularly swallows bumps on a bad road, be it gravel, gravel, or just broken asphalt. A high-quality stabilization system helps a lot. I was driving along the WHSD 180, and, you see, I caught a side cut somewhere before the highway. The car shook violently, but it kept going straight ahead. I immediately went to the side of the road, got out and went nuts. There was a tire residue on the disc. There was a tread circle on top, but there was no side cord. I'm talking about the fact that, even despite this, the car did not lose control. Well, as a result, in a huge number of reviews, the authors write that Venza is an ideal car for family trips, the whole essence and advantages of which are revealed precisely on long journeys, large, soft, it floats along the road like a ship. If necessary, you can spend the night in it. It's not scary to drive at night, the headlight does not cause any complaints. The distance of 1,200 to 1,500 kilometers is overcome in one hand behind the wheel without problems. I drove it for a distance of 2,000 km in one sitting. It's normal. Even after eight hours of driving, you feel good. 